The question is, this host to another journey. Helen Waitley. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. A few weeks ago, in the early hours of the morning, a car carrying four men crashed into a park lorry at the edge of the A2 just south of Faversham. Three of the men were killed and another seriously injured. We don't know and may never know exactly what happened, and I'm absolutely not blaming the lorry driver. But the stretch of the A2 where this happened is a well-known spot for what we call lorry fly parking, where lorries park in laybys or on slip roads on hard shoulders, pavements or verges, often at the edge of busy roads like the A2, the A20 and the A249 in my constituency, but sometimes up quiet country lanes in industrial estates or housing estates, and in general, in places where lorries shouldn't be parked for more than a few minutes that might be needed for a delivery or an unexpected stop sometimes parking legally, but sometimes illegally, sometimes perfectly safely, albeit inconveniently, and other times, unfortunately, dangerously. Mr Deputy Speaker, this was not the first fatality in my constituency involving a parked lorry. A 74-year-old woman died crashing into a lorry parked on the hard shoulder at Junction 7 of the M20 a couple of years ago. Whatever the cause of the latest crash, this horrific accident should focus our minds on the problem, focus our attention on the need for more lorry parking spaces and focus our energies on ending lorry fly parking. Because lorry fly parking is dangerous. Whether it's the danger to other motorists of lorries lined up bumper to bumper in laybys, sometimes jutting precariously out into the road, or the danger to police officers who risk their lives walking along the hard shoulder at night with hundreds of cars speeding by as they move along illegally parked trucks, or the danger to lorry drivers themselves in charge of a heavy goods vehicle if they haven't had a proper rest. And a busy roadside with traffic thundering past is hardly a good place to get a proper night's sleep. Rightly, the haulage industry is tightly regulated. Drivers must record their hours on a tachograph and take breaks every four and a half hours. When the time comes to stop, they have to stop. And not only is the roadside a pretty bad place to sleep, it's a pretty bad place to stop off in general if you're a driver. No security, no facilities, not only no showers, not even toilets. And that's hardly helpful for an industry that would like to attract more women. From the point of view of most of my constituents, those who are not lorry drivers, they see litter and pretty disgusting other stuff on the roadside. And if you need to pull over into a lay-by, for some reason when you're on a main road, forget it, because they're already full. Let them run. Let them run. Thank you, the Honourable Lady, for, for, for uh, letting me intervene. I appreciate it very much. Uh, with Northern Ireland being heavily reliant uh, on, on lorry driving and cargo freighted by ship and then lorry, this is an issue that the Honourable Lady has outlined that concerns us greatly. We must ensure that there are safe and secure areas for lorry drivers to park, not simply to keep them within their hours for the sake of EU legislation, but to keep our lorry drivers and those who come into contact with them safe as well. So does the Honourable Lady agree? Uh, that we should look into providing parking facilities so that residential areas are not listening to idling lorries and at the same time lorry drivers are safe. Uh, I completely agree with the point the uh, Honourable Gentleman has made that this is ab- about making things better for residents and making sure that the lorry drivers have the facilities they need. Absolutely. And I thank him very much for contributing the Northern Ireland perspective. Um, Lorry parking is not a new problem, but it is growing worse, and it is time to fix it. So what's the answer? Everyone you speak to, from the Road Haulage Association, the Freight Transport Association, Highways England, local councillors and my constituents, give the same common sense answer. We must build more lorry parks. That seems deceptively simple. We know there's demand for more truck stops. Kent County Council surveys, for instance, show that we have around 900 lorries a night parking inappropriately. And lorry parks in Kent are turning lorries away. Ashford Lorry Park turned away 252 trucks, 252 trucks in a single night last year. So there's clearly the demand. Kent County Council has been taking action, identifying possible locations for new truck stops and talking to lorry park operators to gauge their interest. 
And indeed, the Ashford Lorry Park has just yesterday submitted a planning application to extend from 390 to 600 places. So those extra places will be helpful, but they still fall far short of the 900 extra places we need in Kent. And as freight volumes continue to grow with the growing economy, one can predict that that shortfall will only grow as well. But this does beg the question, Given our system in the UK, in which commercial operators run service stations and lorry parks, why haven't more truck stop operators stepped up to serve the demand? And what can we do to make sure that the shortfall in parking places is met, and met quickly? So, can I ask my honourable friend, the Minister, what conversations he's had with lorry park operators about what's stopping them expanding? What investigations has he made to see how we can get planning applications for truck stops to come forward and make their way successfully and speedily through the planning system? And I recognise that fast-forwarding planning for lorry parks is difficult, given the experience we have had in Kent with the Operation Stack holding area. But when we get that vital lorry holding area, can the government make sure it will be used for overnight lorry parking as well as when there is an Operation Stack incident? And I would like to see lorry parking included in all major road improvements, specifically one that's coming our way, the Lower Thames Crossing, not just in Kent, but across the whole country. Thank you very much, and I thank my honourable friend for giving way. Just as in Faversham and Mid-Kent, my constituency of Northampton South has a lot of lorry traffic and much of its economy is based on logistics. The Department does focus heavily on rail, often for good reason, but would she agree with me that with a majority of haulage and freight taking place by road, the Department needs to look not only at, at, uh, at rail provision, but at road provision, and when looking at road provision, not just the infrastructure of the roads itself, but lorry parking and good quality facilities to go with that as a priority item. Um, I thank my honourable friend for making the point exactly that as we're building and investing in the road infrastructure, as we're doing in this country, that should go hand in hand with planning in where lorries are going to park and the facilities needed by drivers. The two should go together. And no major road investment should be planned without planning um, facilities for the drivers using that motorists and, and, and lorries, both of them. So I thank him for, for making that point so, so strongly. Um, then. As we provide more parking places, we must make sure that drivers use them. And I welcome the signals the Government has been sending about effective enforcement. For instance, supporting the enforcement pilot currently underway in Ashford, where lorries are being clamped the first time they park illegally. This has successfully reduced reoffending, and the message is getting through. Only one lorry has been clamped twice, and all the fines have been paid. Now, my honourable friend has kindly contributed to this success by allowing the local authority to, to increase the fine they can charge, which means that the council is no longer being left out of pocket when they clamp lorries, and I thank him for that. If the clamping pilot continues to get results, I hope that it can be rolled out across Kent and across the whole country. And eventually, I think we should have a complete ban on lorries parking for long breaks outside truck stops. But, as drivers have told me many times, it's only reasonable to enforce a ban on lorry fly parking if there are enough legitimate places for lorries to park. As I've been saying, now Kent is di disproportionately affected by lorry fly parking because the majority of the UK's road freight travels along the M20 and across the Channel or alternatively down the M2, A2 and down to the Channel Crossings. But either way, it makes its way to the Channel Crossings um, in Kent. And the Port of Dover specifically handles 10,000 HGVs a day. So though we feel this so particularly in Kent, it is a national problem. And I know from colleagues that there are lorries lining up on many other trunk roads across the country. Maybe sometime in the future we will have self-driving lorries, which I assume won't need to stop to sleep. But that isn't going to happen for some years, probably some decades, and in the meantime we have to do something about this. I know my honourable friend, like his predecessor the member for South Holland and the De Deepings, gets this, and I thank them for the hard work they have put in so far. To conclude, 
Can I just say to the Minister, if we are to achieve the vision of a dynamic country fit for the future, we need the right infrastructure to keep the economy moving. The situation we have now is unacceptable for lorry drivers, unacceptable for other motorists and unacceptable for residents who live in the places which have become improvised truck stops. And it's dangerous. We need more lorry parks, we need better facilities for drivers and we need effective enforcement. And that way we can end lorry fly parking and make our roads safer. Here. Here. Minister Nock. Well, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I congratulate my honourable friend for securing this debate uh, about lorry parking. Uh, it's a subject which I know, and she will know from previous debates, including last October, is of uh, great importance to those members who represent parts of the country and communities which are adversely affected by lorry fly parking. And my honourable friend has been a very vigorous uh, and doughty campaigner on this issue. As I recently heard at a round table of road freight stakeholders, one of many regular meetings I hasten to reassure her, which I have with the industry and its stakeholders, this is just as much a concern of trade bodies and driver unions. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, my department is, as you might expect, considering this issue uh, not merely in relation to Kent, although that is, of course, of central importance for reasons that I will outline, but on a national basis. But it does have particular salience in Kent, we should be clear about that, the Dover Strait ports handle a considerable majority of the entire country's international road freight, creating a particular challenge in relation to HGV traffic in that county. Road freight plays an indispensable role in keeping our economy moving and we must not lose sight of that fact. But we must also be mindful of the adverse effects that she has very well delineated this evening. There's adverse effects that it can have on communities, and we must do our best to uh, mitigate them. I understand that fly parking can blight localities such as laybys, which are not intended for overnight parking and do not generally have even the most basic facilities. And I want her to know that colleagues across the department share that view. In addition to the environmental consequences of fly parking, my honourable friend has drawn attention to the potential road safety risks it can pose. Now, of course, it would not be appropriate for me to comment on the particular causes of the tragic incident that she referred to. But if I may speak generically, I am grateful to her for highlighting through it the potentially devastating consequences of unsafe parking. We must be quite clear. Dangerous parking is never acceptable. As set out in the Highway Code, it is an offence to park in a dangerous place. Such behaviour is rightly the subject of active enforcement by the police. There are provisions in the driver's hours rules, as she has noted, to enable drivers to depart from the standard limits in order to reach a safe stopping place. So these requirements are no excuse for unsafe parking. Nevertheless, there is no doubt that there is a shortage of overnight lorry parking in Kent and more widely. Facilities to enable HGV drivers to take a proper break in a safe and secure environment and with access to welfare amenities should be seen, as my honourable friend has noted, as a key part of our national infrastructure. However, the situation, while complex, is, I would suggest, far from hopeless. A number of initiatives are underway which should help to make a real difference and to address the current mismatch between supply and demand. Uh, I'm encouraged by plans in the private sector to bring additional parking provision to the market. In particular, as my honourable friend has mentioned, the plans by Ashford International Truck Stop to double in size are highly encouraging. Other market-led developments, for example, in relation to online booking of parking spaces, should help to maximise efficient use of existing sites as they are. But governments clearly can play a role in facilitating greater provision. Kent County Council is, with the support of Highways England, identifying where additional parking is most needed, and that council is working closely with private sector providers to identify what funding options may exist to bring those sites into being. As Kent members will be well aware, we have been obliged to rethink our previous plans for Lorry Park in East Kent for use as part of Operation Stack. However, we remain committed to developing a permanent solution to the issue of lorry parking in the county. I can confirm that the initial public consultation on this, which Highways England expects to launch in the spring, will also seek views on the use of the lorry park for business-as-usual overnight parking, 
precisely as my honourable friend has suggested. Nationally, we're looking carefully at the evidence as to gaps between demand and supply across the country and the potential role that government could play in facilitating development at specific sites. Now, these different measure, will not, measures will not lead to more lorry parking overnight, but they demonstrate, I think, that central and local government and private providers are seeking to pull together in the same direction. My honourable friend also asked what is currently preventing further expansion by operators, and she touches on many of the factors in her own speech. Ministers and officials uh, have, included, have discussed the shortage of lorry parking spaces with a number of providers and potential providers. This is with a view to understanding what is preventing expansion and how policy measures might make a difference. As she has suggested, planning is a major concern. Uh, motorway service areas are an important part of the picture too as they provide around half of the 15,000 lorry parking spaces across the country. The DFT circular which covers planning and roadside facilities on the strategic road network was changed in 2013 to help to enable applications to be considered more efficiently. Nevertheless, developers still take a significant financial risk uh, that at the planning stage proposals will be turned down or suffer lengthy delays even when they could be rationally certain that there is significant demand. Some providers are keen to bring forward innovative business models such as combining truck parks with other services such as refuelling and services for general motorists. These models can pose some challenges for planning decisions uh, including ensuring different business models are treated fairly in the planning system and in relation to their obligations to pay for the necessary highway access. So planning permission can be one of the key obstacles to development. In this context, we're examining how best to ensure that the strategic importance of adequate lorry parking is given due weight in planning decisions. But we should acknowledge that some of the planning challenges reflect, as one would expect, legitimate concerns of local residents and other stakeholders, and each application must be considered on its merits. However, Mr. Secretary Speaker, this is not just a question of planning risk. Uh, it is also... Um, uh, goes to uh, the nature of the business itself. Truck parks are, in many cases, low-margin businesses. They also require significant space. Uh, in that context, the commercial viability of potential truck parks can be limited by the preference of some drivers to park for free by the roadside. Enforcement, therefore, against inappropriate or dangerous parking must go alongside the provision of truck parks. It is an important part of the overall solution. Cracking down on the ability to park up for free in inappropriate locations should help to provide the market with confidence that demand for proper parking facilities will be there. And I'm very pleased that my honourable friend has been so supportive of the enforcement measures that are being piloted on a stretch of the A20, including our clamp first time approach. Since I last addressed the House on this subject, that trial has got underway and we are closely monitoring the results. As she has noticed, I recently authorised Ashford Council to use a higher clamping release fee uh, in order to ensure that the trial remains financially viable. Early indications are that that trial is going well. In the first few weeks of the 18-month trial, there was no identified displacement into residential areas or other industrial estates in Ashford. The initial signs are that there is a reduction in the level of illegal parking, and we are hopeful that over time it will decrease uh, further in a significant to a significant extent. I am aware that other councils would be keen to implement similar measures. This could well be a long-term outcome if the trial proves successful, and I know that my honourable friend has given that suggestion her support in this speech this evening. It's important to draw well-supported conclusions from the pilot before considering any wider rollout that may have national implications. But the local willingness to enforce this robustly should make clear to potential developers that public authorities can play a part in ensuring market demand is there if additional provision is forthcoming on the supply side. Across the country, the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency has recently begun to issue £300 fixed penalties to drivers caught taking their 45-hour weekly rest in inappropriate locations such as laybys. Almost all of those caught so far have been non-GB drivers. Records of such offending will feed into cross-border intelligence showing about problematic operators at the corporate level. Before wrapping up, however, I should take this opportunity to make clear that we have not lost sight of the importance of the uh, driver welfare dimension to lorry parking. As my honourable friend highlights, this is all the more pertinent in the context of the industry's efforts to attract young people and women into driving. Although, to be noted, there are a wide range of jobs in the industry 
many of those should do not, many of which do not entail overnight stays. In that context, we've reviewed the health and safety regulations in relation to facilities for visiting drivers at distribution centres. And I'm pleased to say that as a consequence, the health and safety executive have clarified that drivers must have access to welfare facilities, including toilets, in the premises they visit as part of their work. And my department is working with stakeholders to draw up a statement of rights as to facilities to help improve the standard of facilities available to drivers at distribution centres. In addition to the quality of drivers' facilities at distribution centres, there are, of course, issues relating to the quantity of off-site parking at some of these developments. It's important, too, to note that local planning authorities should challenge developers to ensure that there is sufficient on-site parking to avoid the displacement of waiting lorries into the surrounding areas. Mr Deputy Speaker, we know that the quality of facilities could be better at some overnight lorry parks, including some motorway service areas. Of that, there can be no doubt. In this context, I am encouraged by market initiatives to increase the transparency as to the facilities available, which should help to drive up standards over time. Let us be clear. The Government is considering the issue of lorry parking with the importance that it deserves. We will continue to seek out opportunities to facilitate more and better quality provision alongside our industry and local government partners. The question is this House to now adjourn. As many of the other opinions say aye. Aye. The ayes have it, the ayes have it. Order, order.